first time we worked together, but understanding um, the, um, it's hard to understand the way I work uh, when we haven't worked together. But we had a good feeling about in the first couple of meetings we had, and it was, even though we didn't have uh, very extensive pre-production, uh, I, I tried to fill them in as much as possible as to what I like to do, what, how many shots we're gonna get here, what sort of thing, uh, and the script kept changing. Um, and uh, this, this particular film lent itself to uh, the ability to keep, um, keep taking the script as a basis and then improvising from there using two, three cameras sometimes. Uh, locations became less important in this particular film because uh, and, and let's say you go uh, the film like you go or or even uh, Shutter Island quite honestly uh, there's him and then there's the director of photography uh, Rodrigo Prieto uh, it was the first time I worked with him too and it was a matter of trying to explain to him the way I try to shoot in camera movement um, and uh, giving an idea of how many setups we're gonna have for that day uh, each scene we try to do it as much as possible in, uh, uh, in pre-production to sit down with the script and go through scene by scene and describe, describe the kinds of shots I wanted and the editing patterns in some cases. Um, but this had a lot to do with the, how should I put it, not the dialogue scenes. Not the dialogue scenes. These were, you know, designs, uh, for example, when he talks about the IPO and the camera goes through here and he comes up and finally he talks right to the camera and he says, you know, the IPO is, oh, never mind. That sort of thing goes away. That was, that was worked out on paper to a certain extent, but the staging, once, once we worked out the, the path that he would take, he worked out all the staging. Uh, by that time, you had, a, you had your own community of uh, bit players who were all wonderful actors that Ellen Lewis and I cast specifically in, 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 in the key areas, and he knew which ones, it was like Kurosawa uh, would say, uh, and he said he used to have his 20 horsemen. And these were the same guys who would use every picture in the last 20 years of his life, where they would be, uh, they would get there in the morning, they'd work on the scene, and they, if they had somebody specially uh, doing a stunt or something in the foreground or dying in the foreground, it was always the same guys. <laughs> and all the pictures, uh, these are my 20 horsemen, and they go in with the ADs, they knew what to do. Okay, I'll do that. No, you change costumes and do. So they worked out, and that sort of thing, that's how we worked out a lot of it. We knew, um, uh, we knew, uh, it was kind of fun sometimes in terms of trying to figure out, for example, the NASDAQ hooker. <laughs> what to do with her. And in the sense, the first one is coming at us and we put her on a, 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 tra a dolly, but that limited her moves, right? So, okay, that was, she was the, um, the uh, what are they, the big stocks. She was the media blue chip. Oh, that's the first one. Blue chip. blue chip. She was the blue chip, yeah. Then the, the NASDAQ, I said, well, let's go backwards with her or something. Then he figured out, the, he figured out the, which guys to put in there, what they were going to do. Then, of course, you throw Jonah Hill. And, uh, you know, that, that's, I mean, he can tell you more in terms of laying out a lot of the action in the film, particularly the party scenes. Yeah, we did a lot of scenes. I mean, I mean in the pre-production, we did... Um, and I first worked with, you know, with Gov Marty, and it was very specific in the shots, which was an interesting process, which I, I don't, you know, every director works very differently, but uh, with Marty, it was, it was interesting because he, you know, used to go for his script and actually shot list on the script, on the page of the script, and then Rodrigo and I would then come and meet with him and sort of go through these setups, and, and those setups in many cases were the setups we shot. I mean, obviously, there was always room for improvisation, yeah. always. But it, it was a, as a guide, it was it was actually very interesting. And so, when you did a scene, it was actually there was also it was very uh, actually satisfying to do it to actually understand the sequence you were doing based on where the camera was going, not just based on the action. It was a, it was a scene that was for camera and a lens. So we often built scenes like that. But I think, but there was a lot of improvisation as well in the film. But within a, a structure that was set, a frame, a canvas that was painted, a scenery that was painted, and the one worked in that scenery. So that was very sort of without really, from what I understand, no, not too many, not too much difficulty. Uh, uh, no, everyone was, you know, it was. Did it. Everyone understood what we were doing, and they were there because they wanted to be involved in the process we were doing. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was, I think it was the first time. Um, I, I don't I haven't made a picture where I've had that many scenes with uh, uh, the, the, the sexuality, so to speak, uh, because it, it's really not in the film. It's not erotic. It's just there, you know. 
Um, and therefore, uh, it's always been a little awkward. But in this picture, for whatever reason, when I said, look, I can't do the film unless I have people who just know what the hell we're doing. And uh, don't give us any trouble, please, let's just try, you know, and uh, even including the leads, saying, okay, you've got to trust me to be able to cut this down or trim whatever. And, uh, and that, that's how it worked, that's how it worked. Yeah. Well, that air, fucking on the airplane scene alone, I mean, <laughs> kind, of, kind of worth some award somewhere. I think. <laughs> You've never been so pleased to get off a oh, set at the set. end of the day. Because <laughs> that set didn't smell too good. No. The end of the day. Oh, no. I was on, I was outside. Yeah, yeah it looks good. Okay. Um, I went in a few times, remember? But, but yeah, no, we designed we designed a shot. This is just um, I never. One of the things was they felt that they didn't want to do the the airplane party uh, at all, and I thought, well, we said we've got it. There was this. 12-page sequence in Vegas, which was really interesting from the book. Very, very uh, complicated and uh, actually based on things that actually happened there. And I said, you know, this just seems like everything else we have. So how do we make it different? How do we just make it, you know, um, I'm going to have my bachelor party. We started on the plane and we, I said, well, they started on the plane and um, next thing you know, they spent $2, two million dollars to fix up uh, the, the, the chaos that they created in the hotel. That's it. <laughs> That's all you need to know. So, all right, do we need to show that there were shots of Vegas, there were shots outside, people waving us, who cares? I said, we see it on television, it, it doesn't matter. So what was more important? But the plane was more important. So we had the interior of the plane, which we squeezed into the schedule. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was very good at this, squeezing in uh, scenes that were not scheduled. <laughs> and sets that were not scheduled, all within our shooting schedule, which was 87 days. Uh, a, a long schedule, but it was a, a lot, a lot of stuff to shoot. In any event, mixed, uh, long story short, the, uh, the shots on the plane didn't interest me as much, I mean, the design of the shots didn't interest me as much as the shot of the debris in, in the uh, hotel suite. And I said, okay, the design of the shot on the plane was an overhead track, and that sort of thing. That's what I designed first, and I said, an overhead track would be great. But then we found out that they didn't have a party like in the I forget, something about first class and second class. Yeah, yeah, but, and there weren't enough people, and we couldn't afford the rest of the plane. I said, all right, all right. So forget that. They got, they got the tracking shot on the ceiling. All right. So I said, why don't we use that for the hotel? And that's what we went for. Use that shot. And that, for me, meant something in terms of uh, the design, et cetera. You know? And therefore, on the plane, it really the work was really setting up the choreography of what was going on. Because the shot is really just, I mean, Camera, camera operator was terrific, but it was pan here, track here, pan here, pan. Come on, we've seen that. And what we eventually done was tightened all of that. Right. And trimmed some of it uh, according to the MPAA's uh, requests. Uh, but uh, it was pretty clear because, uh, you know, the woman with the legs open in the corner, you see it. You see it. You see this other thing going on. So it, it just a quick, you know, um, but uh, I, I sacrificed that particular shot that we did on the plane yeah. for the overhead in, in the hotel. But the, the heavy work was done by him and uh, Rodrigo on, on the plane. Well, we had the, um, that phantom camera in that plane. And I remember we, it was so many lights you needed for that phantom camera oh, that yeah. you actually had to sort of limbo yourself into the set of all the lights. You had to go under. And then these lights and like, people there, and then you're trying to... And, we, and, and from that sort of stru trying to find those shots where people are falling over, oh, the, cocaine's that, in the that, air. That was that, yeah, that was that, that's, and that interested me on the plane. The, the turbulence, hitting turbulence. Oh, you have to hit turbulence, we have to put the plane on gimbals. I said, no, move the camera. I said, it's going to be the people. Somehow they get the people. So he was able to get the people to fall. But they're not, there's not, the plane is not moving, you know. And it's the, the Star Trek method. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, that's it. I didn't know any of that. No any of that, he knows all this stuff. That's a great, let's do it. <laughs> we didn't have that. Like in Goodfellas, you didn't need the Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek. <laughs> you know? But that looked great. I said, sure. And then, then we got fell in love with that Phantom camera, which is uh, the slow motion was just beautiful. And I, I wound up only using one shot, though, because uh, it's, 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 it's a nice one. It's a nice one.